This is an autonomous VTOL drone that I built at home. It can take off and land vertically like a quadcopter, but it can also fly with the efficiency of a plane. So how does that even work? Let's find out. Drones with vertical takeoff and landing capability are something really special. They have the ability to take off and land almost anywhere and purely autonomously, while also having the incredible efficiency of wings that generate lift. This improves their flight time and range up to 10 times compared to traditional rotor drones, which is a massive increase in capability. There are many different designs for VTOL aircraft, like tilt rotors and tilt wings and tail seaters. What we have here is a traditional quad design with four vertical rotors, and we also have a pusher rotor at the back, so that makes a total of five motors. What gives them such a massive advantage also has some drawbacks, because the airframe of a fixed-wing drone makes up the majority of its volume and about 40% of its mass, so design and the material of choice is really important for their performance and efficiency. This particular airframe is designed by Flightery and can be purchased on their website. You can of course use an open source model and just 3D print it yourself. I 3D printed this one at home with a Bamboo P1S 3D printer, but I used some special filaments like this one, which is ASA with carbon fiber. This particular material can withstand heat, moisture, UV, and even some human error. This 3D printed airframe is then held together by carbon rods that go through here and here. And you also have carbon rods that are holding the vertical motors together. And those are just off the shelf parts that you cut in size. Uh, it's also held up by a lot of glue, some screws and some PETG mounting components for the electronics and such. Now let's get a bit closer. Vertical takeoff and landing is achieved through these vertical propellers, exactly like a traditional roller drone. Each of these propellers is powered by a motor. The motors are powered by a chip known as an electronic speed controller that is located here on the underside. This chip essentially regulates the power sent to each motor, but that chip is controlled by the flight controller. So the electronic speed controller pulls energy from the battery but how much energy is pulled depends on the signals from the flight controller. The flight controller is essentially the brains of the system acting to balance the motors in order to stabilize the drone. Once we achieve the desired vertical altitude, we are ready to transition to forward flight. In just a few seconds, we are ramping up this rear motor that starts pushing the drone forward, and we're also slowly fading out these vertical motors because we no longer need them. Once the transition is complete, we are using the ailerons in order to maintain, in order to stabilize the aircraft. Of course, stabilizing the aircraft is an automated process because that's the job of the flight controller. All of the electronics on board are controlled by the flight controller at all times. It includes an inertial measurement unit known as an IMU that includes an accelerometer and a gyroscope that constantly measure the forces acted on the aircraft. And this, combined with an onboard processor, enables it to perform stabilized flight. The flight controller also includes a barometer which measures the altitude of the aircraft. It also takes input from an external GPS and compass that is located here, which is used to measure the ground speed of the aircraft, as well as its location, and it enables it to perform waypoint-based missions, which is a base for autonomy. The flight controller also takes input from an airspeed sensor. The chip is located here, but there is a tube coming out here that essentially measures the difference between the ground speed and the airspeed, essentially accounting for winds. And that ensures that we always have enough lift forces acting on the wings so we don't stall, which is very important for fixed-wing aircraft. All of that internal and external data is then processed to essentially control both these motors and all the control surfaces like the ailerons here in order to ensure stable flight even autonomously.
You can, of course, also leverage the capabilities of stable flight using a remote controller in what is known as a fly-by-wire flight mode. Those are essentially all the basics you need to perform autonomous waypoint missions. There are four main methods for communicating with a drone. This one uses an RC link, which is radio control. Essentially, this is a radio transmitter that is sending out commands. And we have this antenna on the drone that acts as the receiver. Those commands are then sent to the flight controller and, it, and so it figures out how to perform your instructions. If you're in manual mode, it will perform just as you expect. But if you're in flight by wire, it will actually perform stabilized flight. So, for example, if you try to tilt the drone to roll more than 30 degrees, it wouldn't let you. It will just slowly do a stabilized turn, which is amazing for beginners like me. But if you want to do acrobatics, you can turn it into the acro mode and you can go wild. This remote controller provides real-time control within visual line of sight and up to about 10 kilometers, with some exceptions. It's an ideal solution for FPV enthusiasts as it can also be paired with an FPV camera and goggles. And this is honestly quite magical because in real time you can see what the drone is seeing and you can essentially fly and you're so immersed, it's just incredible. The second most common method is a ground station. You have a telemetry antenna on board the aircraft, but you also have a, te a telemetry antenna hooked up to your ground station, which can be a laptop, a tablet, or so on. This provides telemetry and GPS data in real time and gives you some controls over the aircraft, such as updating waypoints or initiating a return to home. The third option is generally reserved for the bigger and more expensive drones because that is the satellite link. I have heard of some use cases of using Starlink antennas located on drones, uh, but I don't think that's an official solution yet, but that would be really exciting. And finally, the one I am most excited about is the Cloud Link. This is essentially a 4G or 5G cellular modem antenna on the aircraft, which can transmit and receive data via the cloud. That cloud data can then be accessed in real time by any cloud station anywhere on the globe. Unlike radio control, this solution works way beyond visual line of sight, as long as there is a good cellular reception, which is usually up to 120 meters in altitude. And then imagine pairing this cloud link with a three-axis gimbal that can look at any direction irrelevant of where the aircraft is flying towards, and you can essentially see anything from anywhere. Of course, there are legal implications, but we are going to be using this for commercial or government use cases with proper licensing. So what are some of the common use cases of a drone that can fly 10 times further than a traditional quadcopter? One really interesting use case is long-range waypoint-based missions because this thing can theoretically fly up to 150 kilometers in one direction make a few circles around the target collect some data and then fly all the way back and land on its own in a box in a vertiport right you can pretty much set that up to do it completely autonomously even multiple times a day which is an incredible use case if you are planning on monitoring some critical infrastructure or just your business or your agricultural operation, construction, whatever. The other really cool use case is FPV. Like this is an amazing hobby because when you strap in the goggles and you're flying high, it's just an incredible experience. You can also pair this with a companion computer. So you can have an NVIDIA Jetson or a Raspberry Pi uh, that is talking directly to the flight controller and it can influence its behavior and that can enable you to put all sorts of sensors on board and have like ro robotic grade autonomy as it can detect objects, follow objects, avoid objects and obstacles so you can go wild. There's also the option to have gimbals on board with three axes of rotations. So you can send the aircraft doing a waypoint mission and then you can just look through the goggles. You can use that to monitor for wildfires. Uh, you can search for missing people. A lot of cool use cases. These are also amazing tools for mapping. 
traditional drone can maybe map a, an agricultural field or a small village for like 20 to 30 minutes per battery. And if this can fly 1.5 to 2 or 3, even 3 hours, you can map so much more area on a single flight and it will be much easier to process all of that data. So those are already widely used for mapping services and surveys and that seems like great business. And last but not least, of course, there's the opportunity to add different payloads. You can send emergency medical supplies to remote areas, right? If this can take off from a city and then it can fly, say, 50 kilometers in a mountain range, it can land and the people inside can perhaps get some emergency medication, you can save someone's life. As long as the payload for this size of drone is up to about one, one and a half kilograms, if that's something that would be incre that would be incredibly valuable for you to receive within just a few minutes, rather than hours of someone driving by car, and of course it will be much cheaper than someone driving by car, then it makes sense, right? Now that we know the capability of this aircraft, so what is actually the software on board? This particular aircraft is using a framework called Ardu Pilot. Ardu Pilot can be used for all sorts of drones, including like uh, submarines and ground drones and air drones and all sorts of drones. It's uh, an incredibly versatile platform, so do check it out. If you're planning to perform more commercial types of missions, I would also advise for you to look at PX4. It's relatively similar, but it's more tailored towards commercial use cases instead of hobby and open source projects. There are also various different flight controllers on the market, so do your research. Please consider liking and subscribing because very soon I'll be releasing a very interesting video that compares some of the best 3D printing filaments on the market and how they compare to composites like fiberglass and carbon fiber. You don't want to miss this one. I hope I got you excited about building one of these autonomous UAVs yourselves because it's honestly not as hard as you think and you can do all of that at home. If you're interested in doing that, I have this whole drone building series on my channel where we go through all of the steps and processes necessary in order to build one of these drones for yourselves. There is so much you can learn from this journey, so go and watch it. All right, so let's sum up. This is an incredible machine that can take off and land vertically, and this enables it to be purely autonomous because you can have a drone in a box and then the drone lifts off, it transitions to forward flight, it can fly 10 times longer than traditional quadcopter drones and roller drones, and that gives it amazing capability. The rest is up to you. You can use it for mapping and surveying, you can use it to transport medical emergency supplies and goods, you can use it to just have fun with FPV, you can uh, search for missing people, you can monitor wildfires, you can monitor critical infrastructure, and you can even implement some AI with machine vision on board the aircraft. All of that is doable right now. And most importantly, this drone can fly itself, meaning it can perform stabilized flight, it can perform all of these transitions that it needs to, and it can follow waypoint-based navigations. Thank you for your time and see you in the next one.